This is part 14 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss which statement in JavaScript. This is continuation to part 13, so please watch part 13 before proceeding. When should we use switch statement? If you look at the example here, notice that we have multiple if, else if statements. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have that exact same code here. So what are we doing? We are prompting the user to enter a number. We read that and convert that to a number. And then we store that number in this variable user input. And then we are checking if user input is equal to 1. If this condition is true, then execute this piece of code. Else if this condition is true, then execute this piece of code. So on and so forth. Now, the readability of this program can be improved by replacing these if else if statements with a switch statement. So let's see how to do that. To use the switch statement, we use the switch keyword and we are going to switch on this variable. So we pass that to the switch statement. So here we are actually switching based on the value that is present in this variable. And the value that is present in this variable is a number. So we use the case keyword and if that number is 1, so case 1, so if the number is 1, then what you want to do? So the piece of code that you want to execute when the number is 1, that goes you know, after that case statement. So all we want to do is alert a message saying number is 1. Now that's all we want to do. So as soon as we finish doing that, we want to break out of this switch statement. So we use the break keyword for that. So as soon as this break keyword is encountered, you know, uh, the control will immediately jump out of the switch statement. Now if, you know, this piece of code will be executed if it is number one. On the other hand, we want this piece of code to be executed if the entered number is two, in which case the alert message should be number is two. And then if it is number 3, then the alert message should be number is 3. Now, if the number is not 1, 2, and 3, then we want to print a message saying number is not between 1 and 3. That's when we use the default case. So if the entered number does not match any of these cases, then it will automatically fall to the default case. So this is similar to the last else block that we have in you know in the previous program where we had multiple if else if statements and then finally we had the else block here which will be executed if none of these conditions are true. In a similar fashion in the switch statement, if none of these conditions are true, then it's going to fall to the default case. And in that when it falls to the default case, we want to alert the message saying number is not between 1 and 3. And then we want to break out of the switch statement, so we use the break keyword. So let's run this and see if it works the same way as it did before. So we enter number 2, click OK, so number is 2. Let's reload this program. Let's enter number 5, which is not between 1 and 3. And we should get the message number is not between 1 and 3. So the program behaves exactly the same way. But this is much more readable than having multiple if-else-if statements. In general, we need to have a break statement after each case statement to ensure that the program breaks out of the switch statement after executing the statements belonging to a specific case. What happens if there is no break in a switch statement? If there is no break statement, the execution will fall automatically to the next case until a break statement is encountered or end of the program is reached. Let's look at an example. Here we have an example. Notice that after case 1, we don't have the break statement. Immediately after that alert statement, we have case 2. And then again, we have an alert statement. And then after case 2, we have the break statement. So now when we run this program, and if we enter number 1, you know this case will be true. So it will execute this line of code. And then since there is no break statement there, it is going to automatically fall to the next case. And it's going to execute this piece of code as well. So when we enter number 1, it first displays this alert. Your number is 1. And then once you click OK on that, it's going to display again another alert saying your number is 2. And then after that, we have the break statement. So 
at that point it is going to break out of the switch statement now what is going to happen if we don't have a break statement here also then it is going to fall automatically to case 3 and then execute this alert again and if we don't have break statement within the entire switch statement then if we run this program and enter number 1 you get 4 alerts and then it reaches you know the closing brace that's when it's going to break out of the switch statement so in general we need to have break statement after each case statement to ensure that the program breaks out of the switch statement after executing these statements belonging to that specific case. Let's look at this example in action. So let's get rid of this break statement and then let's run this program. So now we don't have the break statement after case 1. So if we enter number 1 and click OK, notice that first we get this alert number is 1 and then once I click OK on that it is going to execute the code belonging to case 2 and that's the reason we get this alert number is 2. And after that we have the break statement so once I click OK at that point it is going to breaker of this switch statement and after that we don't have any piece of JavaScript so the program terminates. When would you combine multiple case statements together? If you want the same piece of code to be executed for multiple cases you can combine them together. Case statement with no code in between creates a single case for multiple values. A case without any code will automatically fall through to the next case. So notice in this example between case 1 and case 2 we don't have any code and between case 2 and case 3 also there is no code. So now when we run this program and enter number 1 it is going to automatically fall to case 2 and then it will fall to case 3 and then execute the code that belongs to case 3 and then we have a break statement there so that's when it's going to uh, break out of the switch statement. Now we want this piece of code to be executed when you know it is case 1, 2 or 3 so that's the reason why we are combining all these cases together. So what are we doing here? When we run the program it's going to prompt us to enter the number. Let's say for example we enter number 1 so it comes here and then it executes this piece of code. Your number is whatever is present in the user input and that variable is going to contain value 1 so we get the output that we expect. So let's look at this in action now. So I'm going to get rid of this line from here. So now at the moment there is no code between case 1 and case 2. There's no break statement as well so it's automatically going to fall from case 1 to case 2 when you enter number 1. And let's get rid of this code as well. And now let's run this program. So let's enter number one. So what it is going to do is it will fall automatically to case three and execute the code that is there. And look at this. It says number is three. That's not what we expected. We want it to say number is one. That's basically because we have hard coded that value. So irrespective of whether you enter one, two or three, this piece of code will be executed. That's because we're combining these cases together. So to make this program a little more meaningful, let's get rid of this hard coded value from here and then print the value that is present in this variable. So I'm going to take that variable and copy it right there. So when you enter 1, you know, it says number is 1. When you enter 2, it's going to say it's 2. And when it is 3, it's going to 3. So this is going to produce the output that we expect. So now when we enter number 2, click OK. So number is 2. So you combine multiple cases together when you want the same piece of code to be executed for those multiple cases. Thank you for listening and have a great day.